Clock here again. Last time I introduced the third causal guiding principle of performance. And this week we'll move on to the first point under performance, which is identifies risk. Performance has five points under it. Identifies risk, assesses the severity of risk, prioritizes risk, implements risk responses, and develops a portfolio view. Oddly enough, minimizing risk first starts with identifying risk. But in all seriousness, identifying risk is easier said than done. It's impossible to identify all the risks for an organization. However, it is possible to identify the risks that are most likely to have a significant impact on the organization's ability to achieve its goals. From a cyber risk perspective, risk identification has four primary inputs. Inventory and value of assets, identifying potential threats, identifying successful attack scenarios, and evaluating potential consequences. Let's talk about some key activities that you should undertake for each of these four inputs. Let's first start with inventory and value of assets. Any risk assessment must first start with understanding your organization's digital and physical assets and their value to the organization. Organizational value always breaks down to dollars and cents However, it's not always easy to translate it into those terms. Sure, risk to revenue may be relatively easy to calculate, but what about risk to reputation or risk to health and safety? Not so much. Traditionally, a business impact analysis allows you to accomplish the goal of understanding the value of assets to your organization. The BIA assesses how much the organization stands to lose during a business disruption and it allows you to differentiate between critical and non-critical services, processes, and technologies so that you can prioritize security controls and remediation efforts. It's for this reason the BIA cannot be done by the security team in a vacuum. It must be led and driven by senior management across the organization. Now you need to identify potential threats by conducting a threat modeling exercise. Threat modeling is a structured process where potential threats are identified and enumerated so that way you could prioritize mitigation activities. There are many sources for cyber threat information out there ranging from paid subscriptions to free sources such as from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Agency under the Department of Homeland Security. And there are also several techniques that you can use to analyze these threats, but they largely fall into one of two buckets a top-down approach, and a bottom-up approach. A top-down approach is an asset-based view that evaluates critical assets for what could potentially go wrong. And a bottom-up approach is a threat-based view that evaluates the potential impact of a given and defined set of threat scenarios. Some examples of each are Octave, which is a top-down approach that helps organizations tie together critical assets to achieving their organizational goals, the threats to those assets, and the vulnerabilities that those attackers may exploit. Microsoft Stride, which is a bottom-up approach, and stands for spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and escalation. And the MITRE ATT&CK framework, which is also a bottom-up approach and is a globally accessible knowledge base of adversarial ta tactics and techniques based on real world scenarios. No matter which approach you choose, it's vital that you consider the threats in the context of your business and in the context of the potential threat actors, in other words, are they script kiddies or advanced nation states, and the impact of their actions. Now that we understand how to identify threats, we need to determine how those threats can exploit our environment's weaknesses by identifying potential attack scenarios. Remember, a threat cannot become a risk unless there is a weakness or a vulnerability that the threat can exploit. Here's another example of why understanding our business context is so critical. Attack scenarios will differ for the size and type of your organization. For instance, a FinTech startup will have a vastly different set of attack scenarios than a nuclear power plant. Take the time to understand the attack scenarios 
that attackers are most likely to use against your environment. There are three primary methods for identifying potential attack scenarios that are similar yet distinctly different. Penetration testing, red teaming, and threat hunting. Penetration testing finds vulnerabilities and determines how existing vulnerabilities can be exploited. Red teaming executes real-world attack scenarios against your environment to breach existing controls and may even provide some sensitive data as proof. And threat hunting uh, finds adversaries who are already in your environment, determines their activities so that you can learn from it, and then kicks them out. Now that we've identified potential threat and attack scenarios, we need to evaluate the potential consequences those threats and attacks or incident scenarios may have on our identified assets. The impacts of these incident scenarios, again, must consider our business context. Through the BIA, assets should have assigned values based on financial costs and business consequences should they be disrupted or compromised. Some put potential consequences to consider are health and safety, particularly in operational technology environments such as oil and gas or power or nuclear or, or maritime, investigation and repair time, work lost, opportunity cost, uh, the cost associated with bringing in external help potentially for remediation activities, uh, image reputation and goodwill. Next week, We'll talk about assessing the severity of each risk. As always, I love your comments. Please keep them coming. And if you want to have a direct conversation, please just send me a message and we'll set something up. Have a great week.